How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? Yeah. Hello, hello, hello. This is the Church of RNK and I'm Rosemary Noy Knight. How are you doing? Oh, man. I've been having one of those funky kind of days. I, didn't, I wasn't even sure if I was going to be able to do this today. I was feeling all up in my head. All up in my head today. Oh, my goodness. But, yes. One way of getting out of being up in my head is actually to come on and shake myself loose of the craziness because yeah you know how I can get sometimes I sometimes feel like I say this quite a lot so I, in some ways I don't mind saying it quite a lot because sometimes people kind of get the idea that uh, bec just because people show up in some way on social media that everything is always hunky-dory and everything is always perfect and it's not it's not always perfect at all I did think of changing my my very mundane horrible sports direct cup but it was a huge cup of coffee and I wanted it <laughs> And so I decided, you know what, I don't care. I'm just going to use my huge cup of coffee that isn't my fancy cup that my children bought me or anything. I don't care. And yeah, it's just one of those days. One of those days. I don't know if, I'm sure, anyway, I know everybody has one of these days, okay? Sometimes you get up in your head and think you're the only one that ever feels the way you feel, right? You feel like you're the only one that feels down at times. You're the only one that feels kind of crazy at times. But you're not. You're not. You can be assured that you're not. I, I finally have owned the fact that I'm not the only one that ever feels kind of crazy and down and yucky. And in fact, I like to say it out loud because sometimes people do think that I, I'm always happy and always <laughs> on top form. Sorry, I'm looking over here trying to share stuff. But I no, there are times when I feel crappy, absolutely crappy. But then I still come and do stuff like this because it, it raises my mood. I have to step my game up <laughs> in order to show up. And some might say, well, no, you could just go out and hide and sleep. But it's like, yeah, but how does, how does that help? I did that for a very long time. You know, in my whole life, most of my life was in response to how I felt. I lived a life that was in response to how I felt. So if I felt bad, I didn't show up. If I felt good, then yes, I was the life of the party. <laughs> But if I felt, yeah, so when I felt rubbish, then nobody saw me or I just grunted and groaned at everyone. And that doesn't get me, in, well, it definitely didn't get me anywhere. So now I've, I've learned to disregard how I feel in some ways and decide what do I want. If I want the goal, if I want the goal of 334,000 people, financially independent, living free lives, all of that stuff, then you know what? It doesn't really matter what I feel. <laughs> like on any given moment, <laughs> I just show up anyway. I just show up anyway. I find the time to show up anyway and just get on with it. So funky mood or no funky mood, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Of course, you know, tomorrow I might feel even funkier. Who knows? But usually I have these uh, down days and then I have a great day the next day. And then it's like, oh, for goodness sake, as being creative comes with its own dramas, which is, again, as a creative entrepreneur, as a creative spiritual person, you will have ups and downs when it comes to your mood. And if that determines whether you show up or not, then you have no chance. <laughs> Basically, I learned that the hard way. I'll tell you right now. I learned that the hard way that you have to show up. You have to decide what is the outcome? What is the goal? What is the, what is the end result that you, you definitely have decided that you want? And if that end result is not served by you hiding away under your blanket, then you best come out from under your blanket, right? And unleash some stuff. <laughs> Because this is called the unleashing, isn't it? It's called the unleashing. Because I, I spend a lot of time, I put this title in ages and ages and ages ago. And I just couldn't, I just, I couldn't make myself at that point. I couldn't think of anything. Because normally I have, I just have a phrase. I feel this phrase kind of downloaded to me. And then I just talk and talk and talk around it. But I just couldn't find anything to say. And so I just kind of put it on hold. Oh, no, I need to go and pick up my daughters. I need to go and do this, do this. And then I was actually thinking of not bothering showing up today. And I realized, no, Rosemary, you will not succumb to a feeling. You will not succumb to a thought. You will see the big picture and you will go and you will unleash something, anything. You will open your mouth and you'll see what comes out. And so here we go, right? <laughs> but the thing that I did start to think about as I came on and drink my, my coffee. <laughs> 
is that um, lots of people feel, well, lots of people feel the way I do sometimes, you know, kind of in their heads and funky and yucky, <laughs> ultimately, and these are all history makers in the process. And yet, um, so most people don't actually show up. Most people would actually hide away um, unless you're very attached to the end goal. And if you are attached to that end goal, and I would like to think that most of you listening in are, um, then there's a few things you need to do. Because one of the things that I always get questioned on is, how do I translate the thing that I want to do, the thing, the call, thing that I feel called to, into an actual business or into some kind of enterprise that enables me to create wealth. So I thought, you know what? Okay, let's talk about unleashing what is inside of you. So a lot of people with their messages, with their books, with their music, their art, or products or services, or maybe you just need to associate a product or a service with the message inside of you. So maybe you have, um, so you've gone through some crazy stuff and you know how to get over it. And you now want to help other people who may be going through the same stuff to avoid it or to come through it faster. And it may not lend itself to to um, to a business immediately. You may not know how to make a business out of it, but the truth of the matter is that you can connect that with a product, either your own or somebody else's, or a service in some ways. Could you walk alongside someone? Is it urgent enough that someone would want to pay you to work with you now? That question is a bit of a hard one to answer because for a lot of people, your initial response might be, no, why would anybody want to pay me? to come out and work with them. And that is that is a fallacy. <laughs> Actually, that is a fallacy. In this day and age, people need people walking alongside them. Okay, yes, there are going to be some cheap, cheap people. <laughs> let's just be sure, let's be honest. Who will not want to pay for that privilege? They want, their, they want to have someone that will just give off their time forever, but those are not your people. You're looking for the ones who do know the value of having somebody walking by them and supporting them. So then you can help them, mentor them, coach them, something like that. And that can definitely be monetized. Um, even if you don't have something in mind yourself, you just know that you have this message that you want to share, you want to help people, and maybe even want to help people for free. You can still associate that message with, because the people you gather around you, because you start communicating, which is what I'm going to talk about in a minute, because you start communicating, will want to buy something. So even if it's not your product, even if it's not you that created the thing, could you find somebody else's product that solves a problem for the people that you're gathering around you? Could you do that and become an affiliate for somebody else? Because that's another thing. People say, oh, how can I start with no money? Become an affiliate for somebody else, for goodness sake. There's always a way. There's always a way. Most people just kind of use the money excuse as a an excuse never to actually begin. And it's an excuse, okay? Just so you know, it's an excuse. Uh, the, 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 you, you don't need that much money to begin. What you need is a commitment to do the work that you're here to do. And if you have that commitment, you will find a way. If you don't have that commitment, you will find all kinds of reasons why you don't think you can do it. But it's not the truth. You can tell yourself it is, but it's not. Okay, just so we're very clear. There is never a good enough reason for you not to begin something that you feel called to do. Never. Whatever you may say. <laughs> Just so you know. I've, I've, I've probably given all the excuses myself, so I do know them. I do know them, but they're just distractions. They take your mind off course. And just in case you don't know, I'm doing Focused, Fulfilled and Free, which is an online workshop, which will talk through distractions, both the internal kind and the external kind, and help you put strategies in place to get over that stuff, okay? In fact, I'll put the link in whilst I remember. Um, and also, it will talk you through how to actually, you know, get your business off the ground. And for some of y'all <laughs> that come on the call with me or on the workshop with me, we will speak live so I can give you very specific direction on how you can get your idea off the ground. You need to be there. That's the link. rosemaryandonunite.com forward slash focused. But anyway, so... In terms of unleashing, I, I wrote a post earlier about, and, and this, was, this was my story for a long time, there was just something inside of me that really wanted to express itself, or maybe I wanted to express myself, but I always felt I was too proud. I felt I was too, yeah, I should just, I should just swallow it and, and, you know, serve somebody else's vision for the rest of my life or something, 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 which was always the, because I was brought up Christian as well. Well, I was brought up Catholic, then turned Christian, and then you come into churches and everybody just trying to tell you to, to, to follow along with somebody else's vision and such and such and such. And most people kind of buy into that. And that's fine, maybe it's fine for them. 
but and it was fine for me for a season but after a while I realized no this cannot be the permanent season and <laughs> and whenever you start to talk about trying to go after your own vision there can be talk of how proud you are or how you are just looking for significance in the wrong way and, and you might buy into that stuff which will mean that you then try to swallow the fact that you do have something inside of you that you want to put out into the world. And I did that for a very long time. I kept trying to jump through the hoops and, you know, keep everyone satisfied around me so that one day I would get an opportunity of my own. And I suddenly realized that God had always been telling me, uh, honey, you know, you can create your own opportunity, you know, <laughs> basically, <laughs> you don't need to wait. <laughs> For anyone's permission to get to begin, and I suppose that I, that might be a word for some of you listening in to me, that you don't need to wait for permission. Nobody's going to suddenly ordain you. Well, maybe they will if you've gone through there, if you've jumped through enough of their hoops. But do you want to? Do you really want to continue to jump through other people's hoops in order to be worthy? You're worthy now. You have a vision now, and your vision is your permission. You just have to choose to commit to it. That's the thing. Are you committed to it or are you scared? I was scared. And I even used to tell myself that, no, I am just, I'm just supposed to be supporter. I'm just supposed to support other people. And I used to tell myself that because I didn't want to stand out in that way. So on one hand, I was telling myself I was too proud. On the other hand, I was also telling myself, I don't want to stand out. <laughs> I want to, I want to hide behind somebody. I'll just support them, basically. Let them do the hard work. I will just, you know, support them. And I used to say, I, I, I was thinking this stuff. I wouldn't have said it as bluntly as I just said it, though, because I, I was under some kind of delusion that, that that was the right thing to do. But I was just wasting time, truth be told, wasting time. And I did a video yesterday on the page, tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. And I say that to you as well. Are you wasting time? Are you wasting time trying to jump through hoops that are not yours to jump through? I do think you're doing it for your higher power because you're not. You're just doing it to prove to yourself that you're finally worthy. You are worthy already. You have a vision. You can actually choose to start living it out. You don't need to wait for anyone to give you permission, though that is sometimes the way we're trained. Oh, no, you need to wait for someone to tell you you're now ready. You need to have done this, that, and the other. Or in the normal, regular world, it's, oh, you need to have this piece of paper and the other piece of paper and the other piece of paper over there before you're allowed to unleash what is inside of you. And so there's lots of people walking around with their gifts hidden inside. This emptiness is it's kind of contrary because you're full of something to say, but you're empty because you're not saying it. You're, you feel kind of dead because you're, you're using all your energy to dampen out the vision inside of you because you just can't see how you're going to make it work. And so you're telling yourself it's impossible or that you're too proud or that you're greedy or that it's the time is wrong or blah, blah, blah. But maybe the time is right and you're just not making the decision to go after your highest good. It's like seek ye first the kingdom and everybody's like, oh yeah, it's some kind of spiritual thing in the sky somewhere. No, the kingdom is actually within you right now. It's as we, we each individual people start to live out the call on our lives. That is it. That's when we start to really fully experience kingdom, whatever that means to you. <laughs> Basically, it's here. It's now. It's not some time in the future. It's not some time after you're dead. It's now. 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 You start to unleash what is inside of you that you actually start to listen to spirit speaking within you and you, you start to act on your intuition right now. You don't make excuses any longer. You choose to show up regardless of how you feel. Like I said at the beginning, <laughs> feeling credit, you still show up, man, because you're committed to the purpose. You're committed to the goal. You don't get caught up in your thoughts and your feelings and allow those alone to control what you do next. There's nothing wrong with thoughts or feelings. Acknowledge them, absolutely. But if they are responding to just what you see with your actual physical eyes, then no, no. Because as an entrepreneur, as a creative, as someone with a mission, as a minister, as whatever, you have to be able to see before anybody else can. You have to be able to see intuitively the vision. 
And you have to be able to act on that, not what you can see with your physical eyes. You have to, every day, show up in some way, share your stories, share your experiences, share your thoughts, call in your people, the ones you are specifically here to make a difference to, the ones you want to make a difference to. There's a longing inside of you to let go, to let, to unleash that story, that, that experience, that message inside of you, and you keep holding on to it thinking, who cares? There's no mistake about anything that you've been through. There's no, nothing is wasted unless you choose to waste it. You can start communicating now. We are so blessed. I say this all the time. We're so blessed that we live in this day and age where we can literally do what I'm doing right now, switch on your phone and start communicating with people. Just saying, this is what I think. This is what I feel. I know there's a part of you that might think, yeah, but everybody's doing that. No, actually, no, most people are not. <laughs> most people are dying with their music still inside of them. Don't be those most people. I don't think, I don't actually think every single person wants to do this. Your vision is yours. It's not the same. Everybody doesn't share the same vision, although we sometimes get into our head that everybody wants to do exactly what we want to do. So therefore, it's must, the world must be over overflowing with people like us and who needs another one like us it isn't it's not the truth there's no mistake about you being alive right now and everybody has a different kind of vision it may seem similar to yours in some cases but you don't know everyone the thing about you trying to you being enamored with your own vision and your own calling is that you start to think everybody feels the same way you do and then in fact i find it quite surprising at times when i talk to people and they're like and they have different ideas from me and it's like why would you think like that? And then I suddenly remember, oh yeah, not everybody has my vision. <laughs> Basically, well, you, we get into our heads that everybody must think the same way we do and there's too many of us anyway and so therefore there's not space for us. What? That's rubbish. Everybody has their own vision and it doesn't even matter what anybody else is doing. What is it to you what everybody else is doing? Are you doing what you're supposed to be doing? Are you communicating? Are you daily putting yourself out there, communicating who you are, communicating what you have to say? Because you don't know whose life you could impact. I've had clients who send me um, messages or when we speak on the phone and they say, oh my gosh, somebody sent me through a private message saying, thank you. I've been listening to you for the last year. And it's like, I, I don't even know them. They've never even clicked like <laughs> yet. I've impacted their life and that, that uh, for people like us, we want to make a difference. That makes us feel good. And we don't do it just to feel good, although you know what? We feel good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and there ain't nothing wrong with that <laughs> because we're fulfilling the call on our life. Okay. So you need to be communicating in some way. You need to be keeping the vision very clear in front of you because if not, you'll get drawn into what is happening right in front of you right now. Sometimes what is happening right in front of you right now is horrible. <laughs> and you might start to think that that's all there is. And then you get sucked into feeling bad and horrible and oh my gosh, life will never change. And then next thing you know, you're you lying in your bed with your blankie over your head, watching TV and refusing to come out to play. <laughs> And that doesn't help with the unleashing or, or you go find religion. Okay. You go find religion and you, or you go deeper into your religion and you're hiding away in your religious organization instead of actually playing full out in the real world, in the real world where you're actually called to serve. You are hiding away in your religious organization, telling yourself that you're doing okay because it got scary because you weren't sure if you could. The things that we use to distract us is quite crazy. Even money can be a distraction. I do think everybody needs to be financially independent. Absolutely. In fact, I think you should be financially abundant, not even just independent. But sometimes money itself can become a distraction. You start doing things just for the money. Most people live their life just for money. Well, they don't, they don't, they don't see it that way, but they do crazy jobs they don't want to do for money. And they tell themselves it's that I have to. And that seems to be the normal way of doing things, and it is for most of the world. But we don't have to make that decision. And you definitely don't want to start a business and then find yourself going to the side doing crazy things because of money. Because you're 
too scared to face the reality of the vision in your heart. You don't want that to be your story. Because you can't be in business. I was. I was in business, but I was in a business that I wasn't supposed to be in. So I'd finally got over my fear of starting a business at all and got into a business, but it was the wrong one. And then I had to start again. <laughs> I had to start again because it was like, you know what? If I'm going to be working this dang hard and great, the money's great, good, 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 good. But you know what? I want to do something that actually makes me feel good. And so, yeah, I made the transition. It was scary. It was scary. I did make the transition far too quick as well. I kind of left a bit of a mess. <laughs> anyway. So you need to be communicating daily. I suppose that's it. If you want to unleash and you want to start feeling fulfilled and satisfied with the life that you are here to live, one, be so grateful that you live in a day and age where you can reach it. an incredible number of people just by switching on your phone. Don't be distracted by social media. Use it in a way that pro propagates your message. Communicate. Regardless of how you feel, regardless of whether you think anybody wants to hear what you have to say, you need to say what you have to say. And there's nothing wrong with you just getting on with it. Not just to your friends and family. They will humor you, but they're not necessarily the ones you're here to serve. Go beyond that. Actually choose to do it deliberately. Deliberately design a business around your books, your music, your art, your message, your story. Design a business around it so that it actually can become the thing that supports you financially uh, and you're getting your message out, making a difference. You're unleashing that thing inside of you because... You go looking elsewhere, anywhere you go looking for satisfaction, you won't find it because you're not doing the thing that you're here to do. You have to find the courage to do what you're here to do. You have to find the courage and the focus to stop looking to the side all the time. Looking to see what others are doing, looking to see whether anybody likes you. It doesn't matter. You have to do what you're here to do, regardless of what anybody else's response is to it, truth be told. You do it anyway. You do it because you must. You do it because you're born to. And yeah, sometimes that's disheartening. It makes you wonder, why do I bother? You bother because you must. That's what you're here for. You're fulfilling the call in your life. That's why you do it. You cannot allow other people to determine whether you live out the call of your life or not, or whether you live a fulfilling life or not, you cannot allow that to deter, deter you from your path. Choose to deliberately design a successful business around it and live out the call in your life. Start by communicating. I was going to go into all, that, all kinds of awesome, crazy detail, but you know what? Just start by communicating. Start by whipping out your phone and starting to talk to people and sharing your stories. Regardless of what people think, it's like my daughter came back from her gymnastics or cheerleading thing this, this evening and she'd been dancing her heart out. There'd been music put on. She was dancing her heart out. And then she had a friend tell her, oh, no, that was so embarrassing. You shouldn't dance like that. And I, was, I had to tell her that is so people, people do that. When you start to live out the call in your life, people who are not will feel the need to tell you how to live. People who are hiding from their own calling will come and tell you that you're being embarrassed and that you need to chill out. And if you're not wise, you'll listen to them instead of realizing that actually they're speaking to themselves. They are embarrassed that they're not able to step up to the plate. And, and they're trying to, to put you off your own. Don't let people control whether you live out the call on your life or not. Whether they're friends or family whether they're unknown haters, basically. <laughs> Don't let them determine your life. You're here for a reason. You're here to make a difference. The only one that determines whether that will be your story or not is whether you show up. It's whether you finally get over your internal crazy and decide that I, I don't care anymore. I am doing what I'm here to do. I refuse to play small any longer. I refuse to hide away. I will 
unleash myself. Oh yes. Oh. <sighs> I feel the excitement of saying that myself. So this is my uh, encouragement today, that regardless of how you feel, what you think, what you think is going on, what people say to you, any of that stuff, unleash, let loose, let go, let us hear the message inside of you. It is time for you to start speaking, to start showing up, do the work that you're here to do. Forget about what anybody else is doing or thinking or saying. This is your life, your one life. Don't waste it caring so much about what people think of you or even how you feel when you are, you know you're born for more so live it out honeys it's time to fight for and to deliberately design the life you're born to live and in about 40 no 50 hours in about 50 hours focused fulfilled free begins this is an opportunity for you to speak with me live and get guidance for your business. But more than that, it's also a train. Well, no, I don't think there's, more, there's any more than that, frankly. You just come for that. Because for some of you, you have no one to ask and get clear direction on what you're doing. You're listening to people who haven't done what you're doing. And they're putting you off. They're making you afraid. So for that alone, you need to be on the workshop. The ability to jump on the question and answer and you know get your questions answered get some divine guidance and not even just from me divine guidance to move you forward and then there's also going to be training on distractions getting eliminating distractions overcoming the fear of failure all of that stuff is going to be handled it's time for you to move forward okay and start making money following the call in your life you can and i'm going to talk you through all of that during the workshop so come along to focus fulfilled free it's at rosemarynonnynight.com forward slash focused. I look forward to seeing you there. I look forward to working with you there. Oh, it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. And it's online. So wherever you are on the planet, it doesn't matter. As long as you have an internet connection or a phone, then <laughs> you need to come along. Okay. As soon as you sign up for the workshop, you will get access to the details on where exactly it is and the different telephone numbers you can call in on. It's going to be amazing. Okay. It's time to fight for and to deliberately design the life you're born to live because you absolutely want to. Come to the workshop, share, share, share. And honey, start to speak. Start to unleash what is inside of you. It's time. It's time. Until the next time, much love.